Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends, seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. I want to introduce our very talented co-hosts and stars, Mr. Henry Hatter. Thank you, Ron. Ms. Jackie Williams. Thank you, everyone. Ms. Denise smith Allen. Hi, Ron. How's everybody? Great. Good, thank you. In My Opinion Show wants to welcome our millions of viewers worldwide. Let's talk about Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro is dead the former president of Cuba. Why are people parading in American streets with happiness and in Cuba, sadness? Denise? What is my opinion? <clears throat> well, for one thing, Fidel Castro, to the people who uh, resided in Cuba, understood their form of government and, for the most part, accepted that form of government and were happy with what they experienced. Therefore, they had their frame of reference, whereas the American people may not agree and didn't have a frame of reference to go by. There were certainly people, as <clears throat> we've had various discussions in the past about, there's always going to be uh, people who are not in favor of uh, a certain form of government or the governing party. So therefore, those persons left, um, and a lot of them ended up in um, Florida and, you know, uh, moved on and had a um, better way of life, so to speak, okay? In <clears throat> Cuba, and I say this from a historical pers perspective, there are um, factions, and we'll say it like this, there is a color line even there. There are dark humans, and there are light Cubans and there's Cubans that would quote unquote come to this country and pass for white okay or assimilate into our culture so what we have in Cuba we have people who again because of what their experience was they are saddened because Cuba's way of life is totally different than what we understand he was an elected official. He was, uh, to some, the dictator. He had a number of years in which he in incorporated and explained his philosophy about how things were to be done. Um, but they believed in a communal form of living, whereas things were evenly distributed. And some people have a hard time with that because we are a, uh, an economic system that deals with, you know, uh, if you have money and influence, you have power. And who wants to mess with that? We like that. Okay. Over there, it's a different ball game. So, again, um, people are saddened by that. But the people who, you know, didn't agree with it, they left. And they're here on, you know, American soil. Some of them are now second, third generations. And they're happy being here. So those persons were, were glad that he passed. But they have family members that are still over there. Okay. And so now, um, because of President Obama's uh, overtures, we now have a relationship with Cuba. And I believe that those people who have been estranged from their families will have an opportunity now to, to be a part of their lives. So those are my comments. Well, let's go back into history a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, back to Cuba, mm -hmm. all right, prior to the, uh, the revolution that took place. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, the United States and the mafia, mm -hmm. all right, and the U.S. big business mm -hmm. uh, uh, were over there in Cuba, okay? Mm -hmm. They were sucking up all the money, mm -hmm. all right, and a whole host of other things. That's why uh, the, the president of Batista got overthrown, mm -hmm. all right? He left that island, actually, uh, 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 his life was at, at stake with over $300 million dollars of, of, of U.S. dollars. That's the reason why uh, uh, Castro, all right, a lawyer, mm -hmm. came out of the hills, all right, uh, 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 developed his his network with the, uh, you know, with the dissidents, if that's the proper word, you know, to call them, so that they could have democracy, you know, in, you know, in Cuba, mm -hmm. all right? Now, I've talked to people, okay, uh, about uh, the conditions in Cuba. They tell me 
you know, not all of them, but the vast majority of them, they tell me that, you know, life is, you know, life is okay. Mm -hmm. All right? There. Mm -hmm. Now, but when you hear these sound bites on television, it's totally, it's totally opposite. Mm -hmm. All right? So, uh, people has to start thinking for themselves. Do the research. It's just as simple. Look up Cuban history on the internet if you have it. If you don't have internet, go to your public library and read about the history. Stop listening to uh, other people that, in most cases, they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Look for yourself. Mm -hmm. Henry, what is your thought? Well, like Denise said, uh, <clears throat> there were people who understood their own frame of government and way of life. And Fidel Castro, to all people, were not, it was not a Greek god. He hurt a lot of people as a dictator. And, um, and many of them would never forgive him. And they, as you said, moved to Florida. And what you see parading in the street are people who were hurt by Castro. And they migrated here hoping to find a new way of life and uh, did so and uh, left their families back in Cuba who, was, who were still being hurt by the dictator in many ways. And from an American perspective uh, as to whether the traditional American should be super, uh, celebrating or not, I would say this. We had many businesses over there uh, before 1958 when uh, Castro took over. We had sugar mills. We had, uh, we poured lots of American capital into developing Cuba. Uh, it is the way it is because of American venture capital. It had a great uh, atmosphere for entertainers <coughs> who would love to go there uh, and buy property and celebrate their successes here in the United States. And it was a great combination for the United States. That's why many of the Americans today want to move back there because it is valuable as a money resource and, and a um, product resource for the country, trade. And besides, it's a strategic spot to protect the American mainland. You never, you don't think about that. We like to have strategic islands surrounding the United States as, as uh, barriers mm -hmm. to the invasion by other bodies, countries. And also, too, I think a lot of this anger from the United States is because when Castro took power, he nationalized all of those businesses. That's what I mean, yeah. sugar mills. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. The Mott owned a lot of... All right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can't have a foreign country coming in there okay and and taking your natural resources right all right and not leaving anything uh uh other than the crumbs right you know for you know for the people mm -hmm. okay and the ones that came over here all right uh uh most of them were were were, were in prison he dumped he dumped the prisons <laughs> all right i, I probably would have did the same thing because many of those people that were in prison, you know what I mean, were troublemakers. Okay, um, they didn't like. Maybe they didn't like. Maybe they probably worked for the for those national companies. Okay, now wake up in the morning, their livelihood is gone. Okay, so he said, "The heck with this. You're out of here." <laughs> All right, and that's exactly what he did. I probably would have did the same thing, because those same individuals would have kept causing havoc. Okay. Uh, uh, Everywhere. But he took Jackie, all their rights. He took all their rights from them. They didn't have any rights. They were oppressed. They were depressed. They were poor. They didn't have ways to take care of themselves. And he was riding high on the hog, you know. And it was hard for you know. I heard a lady say it's hard for her to even look at him because he tore up her family, mm -hmm. and the ones that were there they worked for nothing, mm -hmm. and he would just beat them mentally. You know, and they just didn't have any encouragement, any vision, 
and by him being gone, they see it as a light where now we can come. Now we can do this. We don't have that. But I thought they were saying that the brother is still alive. Am I right? Well, he's yes, he's in he's Yeah, and they he's said sick. that he is loyal to Fido. You know, yeah. they say he mm -hmm. is loyal to him. So it's not all the way gone yet. It, it isn't. But the doors are opening. And, and mm -hmm. the whole idea, I think about um, uh, when Michael Moore did the... Um, um, movie where he was talking about what happened with 9-11 uh, and the um, first responders and the health uh, crisis that they experienced. A lot of them had, you know, um, you know, lung problems and things like that. And they weren't getting the health care that they needed. And a lot of them had to go over there where their health care system took care of people mm -hmm. that should have been, you know, a first responder that dealt with all of that. We should always take care of our own in sure. that regard. But they weren't able to get the services, and a lot of them are very, very sick. Some of them have died. But when they went over there to Cuba, they got the health care. They got what they needed, mm -hmm. and they got it at a very reduced rate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So there were some very good things that were established. I mean, we know that there weren't some good things. But when you're talking about, you know, the health of your country, that's important. And like I said, with the responders, I mean, that's, that's, that's fact. That's and also, fact. too, it's been documented that mm -hmm. uh, Cuban health care is mm -hmm. close to uh, first rate mm -hmm. around the world. Exactly. And they graduate more mm -hmm. doctors mm -hmm. than any university wow. you mm -hmm. know, in, in, the mm -hmm. in the world. Are they voodoo doctors? No. <laughs> don't even start. We're serious. Don't, so, don't uh, start. Uh, okay. I just want to know. You know um, and we have to uh, acknowledge that, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. It's no different than over here. You have, you know, you have good and you have evil. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, is millions of people over there on that island, okay, certainly they want to see their, uh, you know, their loved ones and so right. forth. You see? And I can understand that. But there's a price that, you know, I guess that you have to pay. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like we do here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what if we opened up uh, uh, our prisons and sent three, <laughs> three million people, which I think that's estimated that, that are in our, our in our prison system right now, to uh, to Canada? You know what I mean? All hell was like, like what you were saying. This lady you were saying said that you know she doesn't like this and she doesn't like that. Well, but that's her soundbite. We don't know what her what we don't know what her true history is, and the news media—they're the first ones. Th that's what makes me so angry about the news media. Okay, they're supposed to report the news, not make the news. Mm -hmm. They've fallen. Okay? They've fallen a long time ago. Yeah, the the irony of Cuba's situation to the American situation. I'm going to focus on us as Black Americans is all the things that they endure, they can do nothing about it. And there's no shield of protection for them. Mm -hmm. But in this country, we have a shield That's of right. protection. Mm -hmm. We have well, the Constitution. We have to make it work for us. Well, if you Tho go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, those of us who don't believe in the Constitution, that's their loss. But it must be enough black Americans to make this work, not only for themselves, but for the country. And we got to stop thinking as though we're isolated from the main body of Americans because we're not. We're part of it. We're integral to it. And we have to seize that kind of uh, gesture and, and uh, position as we move into the future. The, the century, the, this century is our century. That's fine uh, if everything was equal. No, right. it is, okay. but if I, I, No, but well, listen, listen, I liked what you said. I really do, Henry. But here's the thing about uh, our Constitution. Our Constitution also had some amendments, okay? And one of the amendments was the 13th Amendment. Yeah. And one of the, in the 13th Amendment, as it relates to black folks, it talked about our freedom, but it also talked about unless you were, you were convicted of a crime. It's in there, those words, if you're mm -hmm. convicted of a crime. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ava DuVernay, 
did a wonderful piece, which you all, all of us need to look at. I've already seen it and I would encourage you to watch it too. It's called 13 and it talks about how our system, and I don't mean to go off on this tangent because I know no. what, what we're talking about here, but you, you made the point about making this system work for us. Well, the we got to do that. Not we have to do that, but yeah. what we have to do is understand it and read it. Yeah. See, we didn't pay attention mm -hmm. because that, that line that was put in there, that set the whole stage up for this whole mass incarceration piece and all of this as far as it relates to getting free labor basically from black folks again and making us you know pretty much shadow slave through the criminal justice system okay so please i'm encouraging you it's called 13 ava duvernay okay and, it sounds okay. it sounds wonderful to me yes okay but we have to have our own vision of where we want to go we have to have our own energy Mm -hmm. and enthusiasm to move that way. If we don't have energy and enthusiasm, and I see where we are here, mm -hmm. we, are, we like to lie around in our body fluids and complain and blame everybody else no, and do no. nothing for ourselves. Not And it's all. time. I got your backs, though, when Mr. Trump, Trump takes uh, the, I, and all black Americans as well as other Americans that I'm a part of, <laughs> um, to, to, uh, uh, to make sure that all of this accounted and that's where we have to go and we got to demand it and we got to work for it it won't come easy okay I it'll hear be you. tough I and most you. people who are not a cut tough to um uh to fighting these battle need not need not come yeah but you first but that, you have, those but, of us who but you have to there. equip people to help them to understand how to fight you know, right. you can't bring Our a gun. Spirit. You can't bring a gun to a knife fight. You That's understand? Right. Or, or I should say the other way around. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to be prepared. Gun for gun, knife for knife. You know, you have to be prepared to deal with the situation. And so many people, for whatever reason, are out of the loop. Okay, so you're talking about, like I said, if we go back and we're talking about how all of this affects us as black folks. How do you prepare them? Okay, you say we have to take the Constitution and look at it and make it work. It for was us. theirs for us to use. I understand that, Henry, and I'm saying to you, give me one example of one way in which we can do it. Just give me one. Well, first of all, uh, we have to learn how to strategize together. We have to learn how to trust each other. We have to let our best people form the platform of leadership. Mm -hmm. You can't have everybody darting off in every direction they mm -hmm. want to go. Mm -hmm. And that divides us and it keeps us from rising. Right. It's still going on in schools. Our kids are not prepared for the role that they will they're assume not. Not. Uh, by 2050. Mm -hmm. uh, and we say it's okay. No, we don't. Uh, we don't say it's you know, okay. Hold, hold it, guys. <laughs> you don't go out and support and promote you don't the needs, needs of black Americans, the young ones. I do. To, uh, and I'm glad that you do. I, I think I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. To be the best, the second best to nobody in math and chemistry and science, math, um, political science, whatever it is, you be the best. We can always be the best in sports, but we never drive our kids to be academically the best yeah. and to be the cultural group that can work with each other like every other culture on this continent in this United States can work well together to put strategies together to serve their interest except mm -hmm. the ones I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Why and is and that, that's, that's why, why I'm is so, that, I don't know. Yes, but, you do. But, no, I don't. Yes, no, you're no, an educator. No, I, I don't know. It, it, I don't why know. are you talking about something if you don't know about it? Well, I, I'm talking about uh, the weakness of the system. Well, then now we, you sound like you're laying in your body fluids. How because is that? You, you, because you're saying about, you're talking about a problem. And yes, I'm asking, I am. I'm talking, talking about, about the problem. But you like the solution. You don't, you're solution. not giving me the solution. You're not giving me the solution. But I don't have the kind of individuals th that are capable of working with me. Okay. okay. Even these people sitting at the table? No, hey, you guys are <laughs> wallowing in your body fluids. Afraid of everything. Afraid of Donald Trump. I'm not afraid, afraid of, of white of, men. No, 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 no. Yeah, Let me tell you know. something, Mr. Hatter. Yes. I, for one, am not afraid of I don't of believe it. I don't anybody. believe that. Yeah, you okay. know, I don't so believe we're getting okay. off. We're getting but off. Yeah, um, absolutely. But no, as, you guys as are getting relate, subjugated as by your own BS. No, no, no. no Let's we, talk about <laughs> what we what we talk about. BS, okay, yeah. Uh huh. Um, 
how has the influence of uh, Fidel Castro's uh, death, how has that impacted us? How has that impacted us? Okay. We sit on the sideline because, again, we are not born Cubans. Okay. No, no. All right. But we We're have not, an identity. We have, we have, yeah, we do. And that's what I mentioned that early mm -hmm. on because, like I said, when the boat came over here and dropped us off in on this soil here, it went along the way. It went to South America and it also stopped at Cuba. Sure. Okay. And therefore, like I said, there's a caste system over there as well. And we're not dealing with that. We're not recognizing that. But if you took a panoramic view of the people who are there a lot of them are our complexion you know mm -hmm. okay and i say that you know because race is a construct okay it's a construct you know we're a human race so let's be clear about that the but divisiveness that came about yeah. the divisiveness came about is because of chattel slavery so that's where we got that's a perspective no that's but the reality. we don't know if we were right to be one of the authority Tyrian cultures on this continent, we would rise to dominate. And well, we don't want to dominate, but we want to to uh, be equal to uh, anybody else, everybody and anybody else mm -hmm. who uh, pays back to society its dues or who leads the country. You never want to be second best. You never want to be. Um, the losers and we and what frustrates me is all the losers I see from day to day. I see winners. I see losers. I mean, but there there is you know a difference. But and I want to go back to what she said about the education, and that's one thing. I mean, if, if it's talking about Mexico, if it's talking mm -hmm. about them, it's talking. I notice that so many people value education more than us because they see it as a stepping ladder to stepping out of your situation or your body fluids as you would say. Yes. And we don't utilize it mm -hmm. because we don't force our children to be we we don't we make them go to school but we don't force them to be academically inclined. Thank you. We don't we don't enforce it when they come home. Our thing is, our job is over once they go to school and they come home. No, this is when you take up the second leg. Mm -hmm. This is when you help them because that's how they're able to graduate so many doctors because their parents are pushing them. Absolutely. And so we can pull that out of that. The positive thing out of that is if you're graduating doctors, they're not graduating doctors that's on the internet all day doing absolutely nothing. They're actually studying and they're comprehending and they're applying. This is what we need to take from that. Mm -hmm. Thank so you, Jackie. Name, that's you need to say nothing else. I'm on your side. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> for once. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, for mm -hmm. once. I'm on mm -hmm. your side. You mm -hmm. got it right. I mean, because that's what we need to stand. I mean, all of us need to just rise up and say, am I being the best steward over my child? Because we're looking at the evidence. Mm -hmm. And the evidence is pointing to that we're not doing our job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our kids are not prepared to leave the house, let alone leave the country. All right. Exactly. Okay. I'm so glad that we came together on that one because maybe we can make something happen and maybe the people out there who are listening for us will understand that they have a job to do, mm -hmm. that we collectively have it to. It's just not Henry Hatter versus uh, the three of us at this table. No. Mm -hmm. It's Henry Hatter with a perspective mm -hmm. and one that you don't like to hear and one that you don't like to see. But I'm in a world where those things rise up all the time and I see both sides. I see our side and I see their side. Mm -hmm. And I fight against them both ways. And it's frustrating for me not to ever be on a side that, uh, that my culture says I ought to be on. Mm -hmm. Let's change gears here for a minute. Why are we celebrating Thanksgiving in America? Who wants to tackle that one? <laughs> well, I think it's basically the inculcation we have been um, instructed from elementary school mm -hmm. on about the pilgrims and mm -hmm. all of that other good stuff and you know how they sat down with the Indians and had their first meal together I mean this was an indoctrination we were taught that okay uh, as we went through the system and we see the inequities and all of that other kind of stuff uh, Thanksgiving takes on a whole new connotation at least to me personally I enjoy Thanksgiving. It's a time for me to sit down with my family and also to reverence uh, my God and thank him for the 
various things that have happened in my mm -hmm. life and for my family. So I enjoy Thanksgiving and I think that Thanksgiving, in my own opinion, is uh, to be celebrated more than uh, other holidays because this is, an, uh, is a time to, like I said, reflect mm -hmm. on the things that, that have happened, the good things that have happened and the family that you have. Denise speaks for me. If you, if people, you. If people would go on the internet or your, or your public library mm -hmm. and look up uh, the beginning of Thanksgiving, all right, I think change, minds would change. All right, I, not my, I, I would not, I do not celebrate Thanksgiving, you know what I mean? Why are we of, buying these turkeys? Because of, uh, uh, because I have done this, it's not funny. Okay, I'm sorry. Right? Okay. Because I can't deprive other people right. for something that I don't do myself. That's why. All right? Okay. And, and, and the, 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 the pilgrims at that, at that dinner table killed the Indians. All right? And killed millions of other Native Americans. Okay? And diseased them. And raped them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at the history of Thanksgiving, all right, which, uh, uh, which I have, and anybody, you viewers out, out, out there, look up the history of Thanksgiving and see if next year, if you're still going to celebrate. Because there's nothing to celebrate. All right? Ron, we're you know, driving whole, our whole, country. Whole countries, I mean whole civilizations were destroyed. That's We're very talking true. about millions of people. That's very true, Ron. But as, okay. I as I mentioned to you before, we all were indoctrinated with the lie. I was too. We were all indoctrinated yes. with the lie. But now the truth is we have to take Thanksgiving and make it our own. Yes. Thank we you. have to There's take it things. and make it our yes. own. There's other things that we can do for us, for ourselves. If you want to celebrate something, celebrate Martin Luther King's uh, uh, birthday, uh, Malcolm X. Uh, we, we do some that. Of our, some of our other... Uh, 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 the, the doctor that uh, that created uh, plasma, mm -hmm. you know things things of that things of that nature. Not some not some rapist and murderer and diseaser. They weren't all you know that. What I mean? right. okay, okay, yes. Look at the history. Not all of look them. up the history. Right. We can look right. at the history of who See? wrote the Constitution. Right. If we want to take everything apart, we're not talking about that. Uh, we're we, talking we about, Thanksgiving. We're talking about, I got we're that. About Thanksgiving. I got right. that. But what I'm saying is that there's there's evil. In all of this stuff, That's right. but you have to take it and make it your truth. And I my don't truth, have to take that no, and make no, it my truth. No, my truth is, like okay. I said, I am thank, I am thankful. Right. I look at the word Thanksgiving, and I am thankful for the things that my mother's been. apple pie and yes. all of that stuff. At that, at this calling time, all of the kids to the table. At this time, we must uh, bring in my opinion show to a close. But I want to thank our millions of viewers uh, for watching in my opinion show. Okay. And go on your internet and see the see see the history of Thanksgiving. Uh, until next time, this is Ronald Barry Robinson and friends saying, stay focused.